Boeing spent years warning the world that a jet like this could never exist. They said the idea was unrealistic, dangerous, even reckless. And yet, Airbus built it anyway. Meet the A321 XLR, the single aisle aircraft that flies like a long haul wide body, burns far less fuel, and is already stealing routes that Boeing once controlled. It's the jet that airlines love, passengers don't see coming, and Boeing absolutely hopes will fail. Because if this plane succeeds, it could rewrite the entire future of aviation. This is the aircraft that promises to replace some of the biggest jets in the sky, connect cities that never had international flights before, and deliver profits airlines could only dream about. But behind the headlines and massive airline orders, lies a less glamorous story. One filled with certification fights, backdoor industry politics, and a controversial fuel system some experts say might push safety regulations to their limit. The A321 XLR isn't just another new plane. It's a threat, a scandal, and the biggest risk Boeing has faced in years. And the reason why starts with a mission everyone once thought was impossible. For decades, long-haul travel had one simple rule. If the flight crossed an ocean, you needed a big plane with two aisles, huge fuel tanks, and a price tag that made airlines sweat. Single-aisle jets like the A320 and 737, those were the workhorses of short hops, quick turnarounds, budget routes, nothing more. But Airbus wasn't satisfied with that rule. And as fuel prices climbed and travelers demanded more direct routes, something big changed. Airlines didn't want massive jets anymore. They wanted flexibility. They wanted to fly exactly where passengers were going, not just to giant hubs. So Airbus made the A3 21 longer. Then they stretched its wings. Then they pushed its efficiency to the point where pilots started asking questions like, how far can we take this thing? The answer? Farther than anyone believed. The A321XLR can travel almost 4,700 nautical miles, enough to fly New York to Rome, Miami to Buenos Aires, or Tokyo to Sydney on a single tank. Suddenly, a jet designed for short haul could cross oceans and connect cities that wide-body airlines you ignored. Airlines instantly understood what Airbus had just created a money-making machine, a plane that fills seats, burns less fuel, and unlocks brand new routes without risking millions on oversized aircraft that fly half empty. And as orders flooded in, Boeing felt the ground shift beneath them because Airbus didn't just build a new plane, they broke a rule. And Boeing was about to pay for it. But the real panic inside Boeing, that comes from a secret fear rooted in their past a mistake they hoped the world would forget. Boeing once owned this market. In the 1990s, they had the perfect jet for these middle-of-the-map flights. The legendary 757. Fast, powerful, long-range, and beloved by airlines that needed to cross the Atlantic without a giant wide body. It was a money printer. But then, Boeing made a decision that would haunt them. They killed the 757 way too early. Convinced that airlines would stick to giant hubs and big wide body jets forever. They assumed nobody would ever need a long range narrow body again. So instead of evolving their strongest weapon, they let it disappear. Meanwhile, Airbus was paying attention. As the 757 faded into history, Airbus kept improving the A320 family slowly pushing it into the exact space Boeing abandoned. And while Boeing struggled through endless redesigns of the aging 737, Airbus pulled off the ultimate sneak attack. They built the successor Boeing should have made. The A321LR came first, and airlines rushed to buy it. Boeing's response? Another tweak to the 737 MAX, already under pressure and behind schedule. Then Airbus unveiled the true knockout punch, the A321XLR, a plane that replaced the 757 and then outperformed it. 
Airlines didn't even think twice. American Airlines, United, JetBlue, Qantas, Indigo. Hundreds of orders within months. Boeing wasn't just losing the future. They were watching Airbus take back the past. And that left Boeing with one terrifying question. If Airbus controls long-range, single aisles, what happens to Boeing's big planes? Because the XLR doesn't just steal routes, it steals profits. And the numbers behind that are what keep Boeing executives awake at night. Airlines don't care about brand loyalty. They care about profit. And the A321 XLR delivers profits in a way Boeing simply can't match right now. Every flight costs less to operate, less fuel burned, smaller crew, lower maintenance. And unlike a massive, wide body, this aircraft doesn't need to gamble on filling 300 seats just to break even. With only around 200 seats, the math works even on routes that were once considered too thin to survive. This is why airlines are obsessed with it. Think about a flight from a city like Cleveland, Manchester, or Brisbane. Not exactly global hubs, but millions of travelers still want to fly internationally from there. The A321 XLR makes that possible, without forcing passengers onto long layovers through giant airports that they hate. The result? Airlines can charge more for convenience, spend less to operate the route, and open markets their competitors don't touch. It's the perfect aviation business model. And with global demand shifting toward point-to-point -to -point travel, Airbus is positioned exactly where the money is heading. Boeing, meanwhile, is stuck defending older aircraft on a shrinking battlefield. But here's where the story gets even more interesting. Because the secret behind the XLR's range, the thing that makes this entire business model possible, is also the reason it's facing intense regulatory battles. A brand new fuel system, a controversial design, and a growing list of critics saying Airbus might be pushing the limits too far. Boeing saw an opportunity, and what happened next turned a simple fuel tank into one of the biggest scandals in modern aviation. The A321 XLR's biggest breakthrough isn't visible from the outside. It's a special fuel tank, tucked deep into the rear belly of the aircraft, called the rear center tank, the RCT. This tank is what allows the jet to fly those insane 10-hour missions without adding bulky structures under the wings. But the excitement didn't last long. As engineers and regulators began studying the design more closely, questions surfaced, serious ones. The RCT is built right into the fuselage structure, closer to passengers and cargo than traditional tanks. Critics worry that in extreme cases, like a belly landing or runway incident, the fuel might not be protected enough. That's when things got heated. In 2022, EASA, Europe's top aviation safety authority, stepped in and demanded additional fire protection requirements. Airbus was forced to redesign key structural elements to ensure the tank could resist intense heat for significantly longer during an emergency. The company agreed but this move triggered delays and headlines around the world. And behind those headlines, rumors began spreading. Some industry analysts claimed Boeing was quietly pushing regulators to take a tougher stance, pointing to leaked comments that suggested the XLR could pose new levels of risk. To be clear, there's no proof Boeing had any direct influence. But in a market where billions are at stake, Few believe this fight is purely about safety. Meanwhile, aviation watchdogs debated whether Airbus was rewriting long-standing safety norms or simply advancing technology faster than the rulebook can keep up. The only certainty? This fuel tank turned a commercial rivalry into a political one. And as delays piled up, another question emerged. Was Airbus moving too fast? Or was Boeing terrified of falling too far behind? Either way, the battle wasn't just about engineering anymore. It was about reputation and influence. 
and the aviation world was about to witness both companies step into the shadows. When a new aircraft threatens billions in future sales, competitors don't just sit back and watch. And according to multiple industry insiders, that's exactly what's happening behind closed doors. As the A321 XLR was gaining momentum, reports began claiming Boeing had been aggressively lobbying regulators. The company publicly expressed concerns about the fuel tank design and the XLR's safety standards, emphasizing that any new range-extending technology must go through the strictest oversight possible. Direct and valid safety concerns? Absolutely. But many analysts believed there was something more strategic happening. Aviation commentators pointed out that every delay to the XLR buys Boeing precious time. Time to design something new. Time to stop airlines from switching teams. Because right now, Boeing doesn't have an answer. And that's where the politics come in. There's even a theory floating around aviation forums, again, very much speculation, that Boeing underestimated Airbus for so long, they're now fighting for influence rather than innovation. With the 737 MAX backlog tied up in production issues and wide-body demand shifting downward, Boeing can't afford to lose another market. Meanwhile, Airbus has been accused of bending economic priorities too close to the edge of what regulators allow, a claim Airbus strongly rejects. From their perspective, they're simply pushing technology forward, just like Boeing once did with the 787. Both sides point fingers. Both sides claim they're protecting the future of aviation. But everyone can see what's really at stake. Whoever dominates the middle of the market could control global aviation for the next 25 years. And while the arguments continue, another shift is already happening, quietly, right on the runway. Because airlines aren't just buying a plane, they're buying a new business model, one that will completely reshape how and where the world travels. For years, international trips depended on huge aircraft flying into massive airport hubs, JFK, Heathrow, Dubai. Travelers have gotten used to long layovers, crowded terminals, and the constant shuffle through connecting flights. But that model wasn't designed for convenience. It was designed for efficiency, for airlines, not passengers. The XLR flips that equation. Suddenly, secondary airports become global gateways. Cities that were once too small for international business transform into new travel hotspots. Imagine flying straight from Kansas City to London, Florence to New York, or Perth to Tokyo. No middleman hubs required. Airlines see the future in these long, thin routes. Lower risk, more direct demand, less competition and passengers. They love skipping giant hub airports because nobody dreams of spending three hours wandering a terminal waiting for a delayed connection. Countries are starting to notice, too. Tourism boards are already investing to attract the new wave of direct international arrivals. Smaller airlines can suddenly act like global players. And those giant, wide-body jets, they're becoming a luxury item, impressive, but not always profitable. That's why some aviation analysts predict the A321 XLR might mark the beginning of a slow shift away from the towering giants of the sky, toward leaner aircraft that simply go where people want to go. But if you think this future sounds perfect, there's a twist coming. Because the XLR has one major challenge ahead, and it's not coming from Boeing or regulators. It's coming from you, the passenger. Because while the A321 XLR flies farther than ever before, one thing hasn't changed. It's still a single-aisle jet. Two seats on each side, a narrow walkway, longer boarding, less space to move. And for a 10-hour flight, that's where the complaints begin. Passengers are already asking how they're supposed to stretch, sleep, or even reach the restroom without waking half the cabin. And airlines, always searching for efficiencies, 
have the chance to squeeze in even more seats on these long missions. That's right. More hours plus tighter cabins equals discomfort. Airlines hope customers ignore. There's another issue too. The extra fuel tank adds weight. More weight means hotter takeoffs, longer runway requirements, and higher landing speeds. Airports built for smaller jets might suddenly need upgrades. The perfect fly anywhere jet. Not quite, at least not without some infrastructure catching up. So yes, the XLR might conquer the skies. But the comfort debate isn't going away anytime soon. Still, airlines are betting big because most travelers will choose direct and cheaper over spacious and expensive every single time. And that brings us to the real heart of this story. The A321 XLR represents a future Airbus has already embraced and one Boeing can't afford to ignore. The A321 XLR isn't the biggest plane in the world. It isn't the fastest or the flashiest or the one travelers will brag about flying. But it is the jet that changes the rules. Airbus created an aircraft that slips into a space Boeing once dominated and then abandoned. A plane that brings long-haul travel to places that never expected it. At prices, Boeing's wide bodies simply can't match. A jet that forces travelers, airlines, and even entire countries to rethink what the future of aviation looks like. And beneath all the marketing and industry cheerleading, one fact stands out. This single-aisle airliner threatens Boeing more than any aircraft Airbus has built in 20 years. Because Boeing doesn't have a rival for it. And every month Airbus delivers an XLR, the gap gets wider. Sure, there are concerns. Comfort, weight, infrastructure, a fuel tank that continues to draw scrutiny and regulatory attention. But even the harshest critics know the truth. If Airbus gets this right, and if the design proves as safe and efficient as promised, the XLR could reshape aviation for decades. This moment feels like a turning point, the kind of shift that only becomes obvious when you look back. Just like the 747 once made global travel normal, the A321 XLR might make global travel personal, direct, accessible, everywhere. Boeing can delay it, they can question it, they can warn regulators and investors all they want. But the world is changing. And the jet leading that change is already rolling down the runway.